welcome to Who Corner to Corner podcast. As always, my name is Jeff, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and my co-host, Paul. Yeah, that's me. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm very good, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, all good. good. Are you good? Are you good? Are you well? You're uh, looking well? Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right today. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Now that's established, let's look at our guest. Yes. So we're, uh, we're not alone today. We're no, we joined are not. by Dave Chapman from Cubicle 7 Games. Good morning to you, Dave. Hi there. It's great to be here. Thank Hello, you for Dave. joining us. That's an How impressive um, array of books behind you. I, I, yes, I like it is. That. Yeah. That's pretty good. I know everybody says it as like, oh, you've got a really cool office, and this is just my living room, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So for um, anyone who's not watching this on, on YouTube and is just listening to us talking uh, behind him, Dave's got some Doctor Who books, uh, a TARDIS, some X-Files stuff, I think. Yeah, there's all sorts of there. Look at that. All sorts of stuff, yeah. That's it, really impressive. That will, could keep you, uh, keep you occupied for ages looking at all that stuff. It's a bit like Paul's shelves there, which, <laughs> which change depending on what we're talking about, don't they? They do. Uh, they, they often change, yeah. But this, this is actually also my home office, so I don't really change much of what's going on behind me either. People either, you know, they either take me or leave me on the basis of whatever's going on behind me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> so, um, Dave, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get straight into things, and, and uh, you can tell our, our listeners a bit more about you and, and what you do and, and everything at, at Cubicle 7. So we're going to start by asking you, who are Cubicle 7 Ooh. and what do you do there? Straight in there, look at that. that that's, a tri- that's, a, that's a tricky one to start off with all straight away. <laughs> um, well, it, Cubicle 7 are a uh, game publishing company. Um, they, we kind of produce and publish tabletop role-playing games, card games, mm. dice games, things like that. Um, the, we do things like... Um, Soulbound, which is the Warhammer Age of Sigma. We do Warhammer 40k, Wrath and Glory, Imperium Maledictum, um, Warhammer Fantasy role playing, Victoriana, and of course the Doctor Who role playing game and its um, fifth edition spin off Doctors and Daleks. Ooh. Um, but yeah, so it, our company was formed in about 2006. And yeah, yeah so yeah, it's, it's all pretty good. It's kind of grown. Since since I've been there, I mean, it's kind of started off with a couple of people in a in a yeah, back yeah. room somewhere, and now it's got offices <laughs> uh, with about thirty to fifty employees now. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Were, were you there from the start then, Dave? Oh no, that's, that, that, there's a very long story. If there was, oh there was, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, all, almost almost the start, not quite. Almost, yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been freelance sort of since then and i went full-time about two years ago right okay. yeah so so is that your background then you you've been a game designer for, for quite a while as, as a free, freelancer yeah yeah um that but you know the day job was retail but um i came home and, and designed games in the evening um just, yeah. to, just to keep sane <laughs> <laughs> and i uh, see so that's that's great you you know you've managed to then turn that into your full-time job and mm. you know like... so dave have you always been a doctor who fan and if so how did you get into it right oh that's a yeah that's I, i've heard i've heard <laughs> you on the podcast and, I, and i've heard this is always the tricky question from what i can tell yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, ninja questioning style yeah, that's what that is yeah <laughs> i mean i can i have memories of um my mum was a big um john pertwee fan from his other mm. things so she, so uh I always remember her making me watch episodes of that just because she quite liked the faces he pulled. And I have a very distinct memory of watching Invasion of the Dinosaurs, which is going, going back quite a bit. Um, and yeah. I kind of stopped watching with Tom Baker, which is ridiculous, really, but because, oh, because yeah. a lot of people yeah. say, oh, he's, your, he's my favourite. But I, I stopped watching him as a kid because it was just too darn scary. Mm. I just, I couldn't. I was, <laughs> big scary yeah, eyes. It, 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 all of it was just, just freak, freaking me out. It was just mm. too too um, dark. I, I guess it was probably because it was like the Hinchcliffe Holmes sort of era. Yeah. And yeah. It was, yeah. When it was doing its really dark gothic stuff. And I'm like, no too scary for me um and I, I i went back into watching it um as tom regenerated uh mm. and then stuck with it from from there I, I think i kind of fell out of of watching it sort of the middle of colin's era but then got back just in time for the the the, the cool sylvan 
ace yeah. era um and yeah yeah got stuck with it from there I, I i had a friend of mine um john who also writes for the rpg sort of freelance uh who i've known since i was about five and he, he's a massive fan i have distinct <laughs> memories of him of us having like free periods in sixth form and going around to his place well to watch what like tomb of the side men on bbc vhs release yeah. because he, he was overexcited because it had just come out and things like that so <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 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 watched quite quite thoroughly fr- from those ones. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think that gives you a gives you a fan card to wave <laughs> around quite happily. Mm. It's funny. Mm. I, I remember that um, Tomb of the Cybermen VHS when it when it came out as well. It was like it was because it for, for me it seemed to come out of nowhere. It was like there was no warning. It was just suddenly available, and it was in Doctor Who magazine, and it was available in the shops, and it was like it had all been found, and it was here. On, on, on VHS and we can rush out and buy it and this story which we thought had this sort of legendary almost mythical lost status it was like, it was like uncovering the, the Ark of the Covenant or something like that and we could get it home and load it up and I was, I was actually quite impressed with it, I, I, I liked it because I hadn't actually enjoyed the book that much I couldn't see what all the fuss was about but then watching it on TV it's much more oh, yeah creepy and kind of unsettling and, and actually funny and warm as well because mm-hmm. Troughton's Doctor was brilliant in that. I, yeah. I, it's one of the best Second Doctor stories, I think, for for seeing what the Doctor was like in those days. Sorry, yeah. that's me just going on a bit of a rant. You triggered that <laughs> by mentioning the Tomb of the Cybermen VHS. So I will stop and return return to you. So you, you've been a, a Doctor Who fan for a while and, and, and obviously X-Files and, and Buffy, you were saying, yeah. Ghostbusters... Uh, are you really sort of into the whole kind of fancy sci-fi and yeah, genre type I'm stuff? Then such a nerd, yeah. you wouldn't believe. Yes. Brilliant, <laughs> that's what we like. <laughs> and it's um, well, my next question was going to be, how did the Doctor Who RPG come about? We'll, we'll come to that in a second. But you know, Paul and I have both read the the book mm. and, and been through it, and, and we'll we'll tell you a bit later. We we played our oh, first excellent. game of it earlier this week, um, which is going to be uh, next week's podcast. And it was great fun, but it was apparent from the the book that there was a real love for the, for the show mm. and and an understanding of it as well. And and it was very, um, you know, like I said it was the, the rules and things are actually quite a sort of small and, and simple part. But there's a lot of um, well, not necessarily simple per se, but you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of um, you know, kind of examples and mm. things in it. And and you, you know, it's quite an entertaining. It is, read and it's not like well. it's not just like copy and paste from standard Doctor mm. Who paragraphs that you read all sorts of all yeah. over the place. It's, you know, it's 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 it, like Jeff said. It seems to be written with some from a perspective that understands the show and the heart and the soul of and, the show, and a, and a real mm. love a love for it as well. And and um, you know, so, so yeah, we were really impressed by that. And and because sometimes you you see, you know something of you know, you know a book or you know a game or whatever for something that you like and the people who've made it are not yeah. necessarily as into it as, as you might be so you know talking to you now and and you know mm. you and your love for the show and also the other things that, that you like as well you know I, I love Buffy as well and you know so you're, you're one of us <laughs> really you know <laughs> awesome yeah definitely definitely in the geek crowd there that's great <laughs> yeah so so how did the, Do- the Doctor Who RPG come about and, and, you know, in terms of, you know, how did Cubicle 7 kind of get it and then, you know, your involvement on it and, you know, so what, what was the story there? It's a very strange one, um, but um, when the Conspiracy X game that I was working on before for Eden mm. Studios, the, um, I, I worked on the second edition of that one, sort of converting it from one game system to another to sort of to, to make it into their house style. And I had this email um come to me from chris birch um who is currently um head of modifius games um but back then he was uh running a company called joystick junkies which did t-shirts mm. which were themed on um arcade things and he's he was just getting into the rpg game making market and he, he dropped me an email and just said oh yeah i really enjoyed conspiracy x and and we started chatting and we were, we were discussing how to get more people playing tabletop rpgs because this mm. was like 
mid 2000s it was before um stranger things and things yeah, like that were, yeah. were, were making it popular again mm. and we were, we were mm. trying to think of ways to get more more kids interested in it and, and a new audience and we were talking about how we could tie in with a license uh, a, a big yeah. property something like james bond and stuff like that um that would possibly um entice a new audience and uh, it was just after um the end of series one the um eccleston one mm. and it was just that was just blew me away um yeah. and we were discussing yeah. saying oh yeah doctor who would be a great one because the kids love it as well um uh, mm. and I was working in a big bookstore at the time, which had a life-size Dalek, and seeing that transition of kids coming in, asking their parents, "What's that?" Yeah, yeah, to yeah. them, "Oh Suddenly God, it's, it's a Dalek." Mm. Um, that that was just great. So we thought, we, I thought, oh, this would be a great way to get kids and a new generation of gamers involved, is to do with something Doctor Who related. Chris Birch mm. um, had worked with BBC licensing in the past. Mm. And the next thing I knew, I was in a pub in the middle of London talking to Chris and <laughs> being introduced to Dominic McDowell and uh, Angus Abranson, who'd just formed Cubicle 7 Games. Uh, they, they put out a couple of little things in the past, but nothing really big. And we thought, oh, yeah, mm. we'll go for it. See, see how it goes. See how it goes. Uh, yeah. And we put together um, a pitch, um, which is, we had printed up properly. It was like a 36-page example of what we what we thought mm. we could do which was basically the first chapter uh and we sent it off to the bbc expecting nothing um <laughs> was it was this post oh, post, or email post, sent? Um, <laughs> post. I, do, yeah. I do still have it up there somewhere on the shelf um, oh wow um, oh wow. Count, uh, <laughs> this is one, one <laughs> for the viewers rather than the listeners uh, 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 there we go Dave reaches to his top shelf, <laughs> risking life and limb so, to bend backwards yeah. to get it. There so it is. Look it. at that. This is the pitch we sent to the BBC. Which oh, wow. Was, um, just wow. Sort of a mock-up put together of, of yeah. what, what we were aiming for. Uh, just to prove That's that quite lavish, they, though, isn't basically it? That, that we knew what we were doing. Um, so we sent mm. that off to the BBC, expected mm. nothing. Got, and then the next thing we knew, we were being called into um, BBC Worldwide in London. We all went down in suits and and um, <laughs> we, I, I, I remember Dom saying, saying to me, we don't stand a chance. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go in. <laughs> this will be a great learning experience. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we, we went in expecting nothing of it. Um, and uh, we were showing off. I, I, I think I had the, um, the Buffy RPG with me to show, to see, show mm. what the books could look like. And I think I had the the old um, Xena and Hercules RPG that was done oh, by gosh, um, yeah, yeah, Sten right. Games as well. I had that with mm. me to show off how box sets work with the dice and things. And and yeah, the next thing we knew it was uh, it was the the paperwork, and we were like, oh my god! Mm. So yeah, I was going <laughs> to say it must have been great in yeah. one respect, but also quite scary suddenly because you're quite a small crew. Yeah. Yes, you know what you're doing, but presumably limited cash, limited resources, and suddenly you've got this contract to fulfil and go out there and do yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was quite a, a, a shock, um, and yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it, it all kind of escalated from there. I didn't get involved too much with the the business side of things. Yeah, um, yeah. Dom and Angus basically just said, go, off, go, go and write it then. Go, go, go create yeah, you focus on that. this game yeah. and it was me just sitting there um, mm. creating that for about three months and sending text off and getting it play tested and fantastic so uh, forgive me but I, I kind of knew what RPG stuff was and I, and, I and thought I did I <laughs> yeah so we, we've played you know Final Fantasy and, and stuff like that which is obviously quite different well you play um, I've, I've never played Final Fantasy actually yeah I, I used to be well yeah. into stuff like that and Chrono Trigger and mm. you know uh, Secret of Mana you know those old kind of Square e Enix games and stuff like that um, but I didn't realise that, that you know the tabletop RPG world was so big you know you mentioned Xena there and X-Files and mm. Buffy and you know things like that but I didn't know and it, and it's funny really when you're not I mean understandably when you're not in that world you, you it's things pass you by so like Paul and I we've talked about like Target novels you know mm. Doctor Who ones and stuff and I was watching the show when Sylvester was the Doctor and stuff 
But, you know, then it ended and things, and then I kind of came back into it with, with Paul McGann. I had no idea about Target novels Virgin and all that kind of stuff. And, and, yeah. yeah, this whole thing just kind of passed me by. And, and you know, today it's easier in some ways to be aware of things like that when we're all so connected and, you know, you, you got online and st stuff like that. And, you know, now hearing about a Buffy RPG... You're thinking you're going to have to have that. Jeff yeah, is yeah, a I'd massive, love, massive yeah. Buffy fan, big time. Yeah, I love Buffy. I'd love, love to have had a go on, on that, you know. Um, <laughs> and so uh, was the Doctor Who RPG, because uh, my awareness of it has only kind of come about since, like, the, the uh, 12th mm -hmm. Doctor version, mm -hmm. but, you know, you showed that one there with, with Ten and Martha. So how far back does it go, the, you, you know, and when did it first sort of come out, as it were? The first one did um, was uh, definitely... David Tennant, I think it was about 2007, mm. I yeah, think, yeah. was the first edition of ours. There were two, two uh, RPGs before that uh, for Doctor Who um, right. back in the 80s. A company called Vassa mm. did one with um, Tom on the front, um, which is up here. Which oh, He's got that as well, isn't it? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> You're making me nervous <laughs> reaching back like so, that. So, so that's, the, that's the original... Um, Tom Tom Baker oh, one, that. yeah, the old the yeah. old neon logo. Is that, it, it is signed. Is that signed as well? Wow, signed, very signed nice. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, my, Fantastic. My, uh, most recent day job before quitting, I, I worked in a shop called um, the Television and Movie Store, um, which mm. was part of um, Sci-Fi Collector Stamp Center. Um, oh, okay. And yeah. we, we yeah. had loads of the, the actors from Doctor Who come and do signings for us and. They yeah. were all fantastic. Tom, especially, he was, he was lovely. Yeah. Um, but yes, um, the, the Fassa did one um, in the eighties, and then sort of uh, a bit later than that, there was one called Time Lords that came out. That was done by right. Virgin Books back when Virgin were doing all the novels. Mm, um, okay, yeah, but that, right. that was just a little paperback book type thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, we 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 started with the, the David Tennant one, which I think was about his, about series three, I think that one came out. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. And then the, Martha, the, yeah. the second version of that was the, uh, we did a, a Matt Smith 11th Doctor edition. And then it's kind of evolved constantly as the, as the Doctors have gone on. Mm. Um, I, I do have mm. very, very fond memories of the, doing the 11th Doctor one because we, we had uh, the opportunity to read the series five scripts before the before oh, the episodes are dead. Did um, you? We, oh, oh, that's yeah, privileged, yeah, isn't we, it? We, um, there, there was me and Dom um, from the, the boss. Mm. Uh, we, we went down to um, the BBC Television Centre in London and they had all the, all the scripts in, in a room, uh, guarded, locked. And <laughs> we could read and make notes, but we weren't allowed to take pictures or anything like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, was, that was great. That was great. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? So j just going back to your uh, Tom Baker signed um, RPG mm. there, were you able to exercise the demons of Scary Tom from when you were, uh, from when you oh, were small yes. and terrified <laughs> of the pyramids of yes, Mars? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've watched them all now. But yes, I, I think it was, it was the, the, the master that did it for me. In Tom's era, oh Imagine, yeah, yeah, uh, old uh, crispy, yeah, scared the yeah. crap out of me. Yeah, all fine now. <laughs> See, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, we've mm -hmm. got some more questions to come to in a minute, but uh, I'm thinking that maybe some of our, our listeners and watchers may not be fully aware of kind of what what an RPG is, and um, Paul and I, we were, I've I've had the book for mm. ages. Uh, and I've kind of looked through it at times. And we've always said we should we, we should get behind it we, and, yeah, and, and give said, it a go, we'll, shouldn't we? We'll do yeah. it. But it, it looked a bit it, daunting. It did. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then so we we kind of you know put off doing but then, it. it. Sorry, then, Jeff. It, it, it's the the daunting aspects is is not just solely the Doctor Who RPG. I think it's the world of role playing games in general. You know, it looks yeah. coming from the outside. It, it just looks so involved and intense and like. I don't know how to describe it. It's, I, I, it's it's not quite like a club because obviously it's open to anybody, but it's almost like the the sheer wall of trying to understand the rules. You think from the outside is is just immense, but actually 
It isn't, is it? That, that's a thing. It's not. No, so, sorry, so, so we say, yeah, well, we sat, you're right, Paul. We sat down to mm. play it and we thought, okay, because part of it is developing a character, isn't it? And, and playing multiple games over. I did that. I did my character. Years. Yeah, but Paul came up with a brilliant character. Um, I did it. And but since my daughter said to me, she said, do a mind map. So I did a mind map of who yeah. my character was going to be and just scribbled loads of loads of stuff down. Yeah. And then and then I found a character sheet and that kind of allowed me just to focus a few things on. So And I really enjoyed that yeah. part, actually. And it didn't take yeah. long. Actually, and, and it, it took was... me like 30 minutes to do that. Yeah, and I and I developed the you story, did, yeah. and and you know, g gave them. Uh, uh, um, Paul and Graham were, were playing, and, and Graham was the doctor, and Paul was his, his character, and and apparently he genuinely surprised them with the uh, the the cliffhanger ending. You did, you did, mate. Into you it. did and, well. You know, it was great fun, <laughs> you know, coming up with it, and um, but the the biggest takeaway, well, a couple really, I guess, it was great fun doing it. Um, but it wasn't anywhere near as kind no, of intimidating not at all. As, as I thought. You know, you you could get you know really quite mm. deep into it, or couldn't you? With with you know the different skills and you know all of that kind of thing. But that can come in time. Mm. Yeah, because we didn't really uh, touch you know, too much so on I, that, did we? I think we did like no. probably like level one kind of. You yeah, know. but there was a good intro, and and so I suppose what I'm saying is for anyone who's mm. listening and, and has been interested. A, a, you know, go for it because Definitely. it's not as daunting and as scary as you know, and you, as you think. And also, I think part of it is you can. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but you can make it as you know, in in depth and involved as you you want in, in to an extent, can't you? It's like I, I said to to Paul and Graham, I, I quite like the Funko verse mm. games oh, yeah. that, that you might know of, and and that has the kind of setup that you can follow the rules completely mm -hmm. or slightly simplify them. And, and I play with a friend of mine quite regularly <laughs> and we've been doing it for ages and then we realised actually we've been doing this bit this whole bit here wrong and and we said at one point we were like maybe we'll enter a tournament you know we think we're quite good at this then we discovered <laughs> that we got all this bit wrong and we were like good job we didn't go in we'd have been annihilated straight away but I've played it with my son who who's eight and you know I've made it a lot simpler for you know for him to to play rather than kind of fully getting into it you know and and so I think it was the same with with the RPG here and um you know it was it was just great fun wasn't it and a real mm. chance to kind of be creative and and uh, you know immerse yourself into something that you love and you know a, a world that you're you know you, you're a big fan of so how do you go about designing a game like this because there is a, there are rules and structure to it and stuff, but a, a huge amount of it is is down to the yeah, players, isn't um, it? The, the, I guess the trickiest thing is trying to keep the hello. <laughs> uh, the, the, is is keep keeping hello. This is from my daughter, <laughs> Doctor Who, hello. and also she just activated the printer right next to me. So apologies, <laughs> Dave. You, you crack on. I thought I heard. No, I, I think, I think the, um, the trickiest bit is keeping the the, the feel of, of the series. And trying to keep it sort of keep the, the reflect the the tone and the the, the things you see on screen, because um, mm. Doctor Who's kind of it can go anywhere, do anything at any time. Um, it's yeah. it has to be big enough and flexible enough to accommodate different time periods and um, different types of adventures. But I think the the tricky thing is going to be. Um, just making sure that while you're actually playing, there are some sort of devices that make it feel like you're in the series. The buff, going back to the Buffy mm. one, which was a big in, inspiration to it, um, the way that the, the Buffy RPG worked was that you had to, um, the, the vampires couldn't be staked until you depleted their hit points enough, which encouraged you oh, to right. have like fist fights and do the whole cool martial arts and stuff yeah. and then when they were beaten enough then you could stake them and while that's a fairly simple mechanic just while you're actually playing it, it makes it feel more and more like the series because you're having to do the fights mm. and not just walking around like yeah. Van Helsing and mm. stabbing them <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> that'd be too easy then wouldn't exactly. it really <laughs> just, yeah uh... <laughs> Yeah, but I put I put something in in our game that there was mm. some padlocked drawers, and I think I said up front they're deadlocks. You yeah. can't open them with the mm. Sonic, you know, because otherwise, <laughs> you know, 
you, you're going to break this story it, open, you know, really, really quickly. A bit too easy sometimes. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Y- yeah. Yeah. So um, we got a question here from Max Blake on Twitter, and he asks, "What aspect of the game are you most proud mm. of?" Oh crikey! Um, I, th- I think <laughs> that's probably going to be um, the initiative system, um, because most most tabletop RPGs they mm. you, you you roll your initiative, you go in a random order, uh, and you basically take turns in hitting each other, and Doctor Who's not really about hitting each other or shooting at each other, and mm. the the, the uh, initiative system is designed so that um, the people who talk go first, mm. um, and then the people who are moving go next. People who are doing something um, go next, and then last are the people who are fighting. So whenever you're in a, a confrontation with the bad guys, you can you always have the opportunity to talk your way out of it. Uh, and try and defuse the situation yeah or you can try and run away um because there's a lot of running in doctor mm. who especially classic the old yeah, yeah. Third, third episode <laughs> run down corridors continually yeah. um and then um then there's the doing things like you can use science or gadgets and things like that to try and foil the situation and then if all else fails the people who want to shoot at things usually unit um can can can, uh, <laughs> yeah. can do their bit at the end so yeah yeah i suppose yeah it is um a challenge to make a game like this isn't it because you you can't use the sort of standard it's a bit like making doctor who video games you know there's Mm. no fighting there's no shooting uh and so Mm. it, it intrinsically makes it different doesn't it and and um you know, just listening to you there, I suppose, you know, there's probably other types of games like Buffy where you'd have a Like Warhammer, mechanism. perhaps, something like that, where it's yeah. all about combat, isn't and, it? And strength and, yeah. you know, different character attributes that are all around yeah. the, you know, to give you an advantage in a conflict and, and mm-hmm. fight. And the Who game is much more, you know, um, sort of strategy-based in a way, isn't it? And, and sort of, you know, personality yeah. for, uh, traits and yeah. things like that, I think. Yeah, it was it was really good. So, um, if uh, how does the fan gene for Doctor <laughs> Who work in creating the game? <laughs> That's a weird question, Jeff. <laughs> well, it's like I was saying earlier. You know, sometimes yeah. you know, you you stuff. You know, this could have been written by mm. a a non fan. So I think inherently, does it give you it, a, it a, a different look on things? Do you think? Is it? Is that what you yeah. mean? That sort of stuff. Yeah, and and I, you know, I said earlier, your your there's a clear love for the show with, within the book, and you know everything about it. So I, yeah, I suppose you know the question is, you know, was there anything that you as a fan wanted to be able to put into the to the game, and you know any kind of ideas and you know story I, elements I think and things it's, like that. It's really just the 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 light the, the love of the series kind of has to sort of come mm. into. The, the game's rules to make it feel like you're actually playing the thing um but yeah. then once once that basics once, once the basics of that's there and that the rules actually reflect what you see on screen like the putting the conversation in the science before fighting um once you start start with that it kind of kind of controls itself and it can, can go off yeah, in certain yeah. little directions and um we've had a load of freelancers work on it over over time um submitting adventures and every time i see i mm. see the adventures come in it, it, you can just you can just feel the the love of the series coming through there was, yeah, yeah. There was the, the first adventure that we we did was one called arrow down which was um a seaside town um that had been um it was autons uh, and they were taking over like the, the waxwork museum and, and all the uh, universal yeah. monsters coming out. Oh, and that, sounds cool. that was that was just yeah. a great laugh. And, um, and <laughs> the the, um, the starter set that we produced uh, recently, yeah. um, the, there's a writer called uh, Eleanor Hingley who's who we, we've, we've got on board at the moment. And when I when I first read through the adventures that she'd submitted, um, I I was completely blown away by just how much she managed to capture the, the feel of the mm. series with it and and oh, yeah wow. yeah it, 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 i think finding the right writers who who have a love for it really helps as well yeah <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that I, c I can imagine. Yeah. So, um, uh, <coughs> what um, what difficulties do you have in in making a game like that, this? I think the hardest thing when it came to this to the Doctor Who game was actually the combat, mm. um, because when oh, when you're watching yeah. it on TV, the Daleks or the Cybermen they're just, just like and you're dead. And that, that's not a good game. <laughs> it's great for TV. Yeah, yeah. But if if, mm. if a Dalek can shoot, it's got to be yeah, more to it. Can shoot you, and you're dead instantly. Um, there's mm. got there's got to be yeah. that. That's <laughs> it's really dangerous. <laughs> um, <and laughs> there's there's plenty of sideline characters who get exterminated in the, yeah. in the series, but but not really a main cast. So I think that the trickiest bit was mm. trying to make sure that the guns were lethal in it but mm. that you have a chance to avoid getting shot and that's kind of where the, st yeah, where the story yeah. points kind of came in and and that the story points also balanced out the other big difficulty which was having one character who is super intelligent and can yeah. regenerate and do all these fantastic things and making sure that the players of the characters who aren't super intelligent or the companions yeah. don't feel like they're sidelined. So they get more story mm. points so that they can do the cool things, have their spotlight moments, be cool in the series. Um, and, and it balances it out a little bit as well. Yeah, I, I, that's yeah. interesting hearing you say that because as you're saying that, I'm kind of uh, I'm running it against our, our session that we played the other night. And and I and I can see how that kind of kind of works. I mean, again, it was only our first effort at this, and we didn't really do story points so much, did we? But um, but there was no, no sense because I, I was playing a, a, a made up companion character, and there was no sense that you know I was anyway sort of sidelined. Actually, my character was quite happy to take the let the doctor take the lead in most of mm. it, but then come in and you know sort of just drop in a few stuff, and I, and I had this. I had this gizmo, which was my phone, wasn't it? This this is quite a good thing. So I yeah. had this phone, which is essentially a bit like the Sonic. It can just connect anywhere, and it could be really good. But I'd, I'd built in the idea that the battery doesn't always work. So every time we wanted to use the phone, we, we had to throw the dice. And Jeff, being a complete git that he is, would say, yeah, you've got to roll 157 <laughs> million or something. <laughs> well, like 16. I, I made it get you harder did, didn't you? because... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, if if they get this bit now, the story's then finished. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, yeah, you know, you you. But there was also bits where I was like, yeah, I suppose you could do this now. It doesn't matter. It will still achieve the same end result, whether it happens now or or later. So I really enjoyed that mm. aspect of it, of you know, planning a story that had enough bones to it that that they could then you know work in and around it and develop it. While still hitting certain things to actually give it, you know, Jeff, Jeff your your uh, story uh, was genius. On Dave, Jeff's story was genius, right? Because the idea was that the Doctor and the companion found themselves in an escape room. So not only did he create a Doctor Who story, he also created a virtual escape room to get out of. It's a brilliant yeah, idea. I, I was genuinely impressed. I never knew you were capable of such a lofty. <laughs> Neither, neither did I. <laughs> neither did I. But again, in, in a way, though, getting inspiration for that from you know from the RPG and thinking I've got to make a story and I've got to make characters. I mean that 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 for me was was the most revelatory part of the game. I think. I mean, I you know we're both creative guys anyway, aren't we? But you know, just being given yeah. license to sort of just go with it within a franchise that that we both love, you know, and have the opportunity to kind of play it out. I'll be honest, I was I was quite cynical at the start of it because I've literally never ever played an RPG and Jeff had to really sort of shoehorn <laughs> me into it but once I started doing the mind map I started looking forward to it and once we actually started getting into it I'm thinking you know what why wasn't I doing this like 30 years ago this is so yeah. up my street you know I enjoy a yeah. video game you know I've been you know sort of um Skyrim and stuff like that which are about you know about as close to an RPG as I would get and and I love those, you know. But actually playing it on just with a dice and pen and paper and a, and a guide in a book is just it's a different experience and in many ways more rewarding. I would say just from the brief hour or so that we spent playing it, I I, I yeah, think I could get it, hooked on it. Yeah, same. It was just a lot of fun and and you know, Paul, you've written 
you know, Doctor Who's stories before. Yeah, only for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you, you can take that and, and use it in this, and, you know, yeah. you develop your character there, and, and you you got to think like them and, and react to things, and yeah, it, was, it was great fun. And also, something that's really nice about it is it, it doesn't, you don't need to get loads of expensive stuff to be no, able to do it. that's it. You know, you yeah. can get the book, whether you buy the, the physical or the, or the mm. PDF of it. And, and you can almost immediately just, just go know, into get, it, get yeah. into it, really. Yeah. So, Dave, for you, is it exciting to hear people, you know, when they when they play the game and make their own adventures? I, I know there's videos on mm. on YouTube of people playing, aren't there? And you know, did you get that kind of feedback from people about you know how they've enjoyed the game and, and what they've done? And, and do you look it look for for stuff like that to see how people I, are, I, are doing? I, with I it? don't <laughs> actively go looking for it because I'm mm. I'm such a a fragile ego. Oh, it's like, it's like, it's <laughs> Don't like, we all? Don't read the comments. Um, so every time anything yeah, comes out, yeah. it's like, oh god, no, no, they're not going to like it. Oh god, what? Um, but but yeah, see, seeing the, the few ones that I have, I have, mm. have, have been uh, amazing to see what people have managed to do with it, and even like the the small adventures that we do for conventions or the one shots, the the way mm. I, the feedback we've had from from some of them. It's it's amazing how doing the same adventure with different groups it all goes completely differently every, every time it's so com- so completely mm. different um, <clears throat> so so yeah it, it's it's, it, it's yeah. quite an ex- a unique thing the way that the, the the same adventure can come out in a completely different way with a mm. different group it's it's not the yeah. the, the way you have yeah, a video that, game that. where it's like oh it's going to be the same every time I play it. Mm, mm. Yeah, or, or they yeah, they that, do try and build the... choices and different mm. branching elements into the video yeah. game, don't they? Where you have different outcomes from different things, but they're 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 always going to be mm. limited by by the hardware yeah. and and you know and everything that's in there. But and, and, we're, and when we're playing this, you know, your options really yeah. are mm. unlimited. I think and, that's and the big game, difference. D- yeah. You know, yeah, a video game can't hope to. Hey, don't get me wrong. I love the video I games. I do. I, I, you know, I, I played yeah, yeah. Um, recently. I was playing was it Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, which I, yeah, oh, like mate, that, I loved you? it. Yeah. I thought it was. All, I just really enjoyed being in that world. But you know, that yeah. world has been created for me. So from that respect, you sort of marvel at it, thinking the developers have done a cracking good job in getting the mm. lighting right, the environment, you know, the sense mm. of being there. But of course, in an, an, on a tabletop, you don't get that. But you are, you do, because it's all in your head right and it's as real yeah. as and you just very very quickly are in that space and it's 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 extraordinary well, i honestly i never thought i would enjoy it as much but i i yeah. genuinely did drew, he, he drew a, a diagram of awesome. the room i did as i was explaining I that. It, oh yeah you know. I got it. yeah diagram so i i, I like yeah. thinking it i generally think in quite visual terms so if i can draw something yeah. i can you know, so yeah, just just relate to it a little bit more. But and that that's probably yeah. a bit that I was kind of um, sort of not dreading, but was a little bit um, cynical of perhaps. You know, the fact it isn't kind of um, drawn out for me. I'm going to have to you know think of all this this stuff myself. But that's just me being weird. Yeah, but you, frankly, you really went went for it. That's what I do, you? mate. And you, if you're going to uh, do it, do it properly. Yeah, that's what you, I say. You, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, Dave, what what um, Doctor Who lore and and canon are you able Ooh, to cover? With, that's law with L O R E law, is it or L A W? They're yeah. probably the same, yeah. actually. You know, <laughs> within the law of Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. Because the thirteenth Doctor, the the second uh, edition of the the, the uh, book, there's a yes. there's a source book as well, isn't there? Which kind mm. of covers well, yeah. her entire yeah. um, era, isn't I mean, it? Uh, Basic, it's changed over time. When we first when we first mm. started, um, we were only really able to tackle the like the the revamp era from two thousand five onwards, and then yeah. it got to about the second incarnation of it, and we we were able to cover classic era as well, which was which was great. Um, mm. Mm. But but yeah, but, but basically, it's everything that you see on screen. Although we were very surprised recently because the, the 13th Doctor source book that, that came out recently, we've been able to cover um, the Doctor Who Redacted um, podcast. Yeah, uh, yes, then. I saw that was listed. Uh, that, that, yeah. That's all canon as far as um, 
the, the 13th era, era is concerned. So, so yeah, it was great to be able to include that as well. Um, hopefully yeah, we'll be really able good, to yeah. expand into other territories, but yeah, you never know. <laughs> it's, it's all, um, pa- paperwork and negotiations, but <laughs> Always, always, yes. isn't it? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the creative process will do what it does, but it all comes down to the commercial yeah. stuff in, at the end of these sort we'd of things. We'd love to but, be yeah. able to tackle things like the Big Finish audios as well. If we, mm. if we can, God, that would open it up a that, bit, wouldn't that it? That would be a, yeah, a, a well, crazily yeah. big amount of stuff to, to even <laughs> yeah. begin to tackle. But, yeah. but they, they've got, you know, yeah, loads of mm. audio-only companions mm. that that you'd be able to bring in and and you know characters and stuff like that that, that would be really cool um so we got um a couple of uh new releases recently so maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, about those so there was the uh mm-hmm. stitch in time book uh, and the doctors oh, and right. daleks one as well, yeah, i'm looking at that one now actually yeah. recently redesigned yeah. cover obviously all the branding yes. changed yeah. very quickly <laughs> and, uh, the artwork on everything it's super. Is, is fantastic mm. by the way it's really, it's good. really good yeah so yeah, t- tell us a bit yeah. about Stitch in Time and, and um, Stitch in Time is uh, a ten-part adventure. Well, it, it, each part is is like an episode of the TV series, so it's almost like playing a complete series season, basically. Um, and yeah, yeah, because it's all broken into yeah, sorry, chapters with with names like the most dangerous uh, monster, and then there's yeah, Act One, yeah. Act Two, so, Act so Three, isn't there? Each it? each in, is in like each an bit. episode. Uh, and as you go through, there's there's some in strange places, some in alien worlds, some in the past, all, all what you kind of expect from a, a Doctor Who series. But at the end of each episode, mm. you mm. kind of come away with something. You're not entirely sure how relevant it is, but you, you end up with something. And then by the time you get to the 10th one, the final part of the, of the, the, sto- the season arc, um, you realise yeah. all these bits are very useful and they all come together for... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's at the yeah. continuing elements, like the, the Target's yeah. own tour company and uh, four missing yeah. Mary Mallard yeah, all, film all, wheels. It, so. All ties together we, to, um, we sh- uh, to, to oh, try man, and save, save a planet yeah. called Nine. Um, so, hence the name. Thing. Stitching Time saves Nine. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, very good. Very clever, so that. How do you... How do you develop, you know, something like that? Do you come up with the the, the episode, you know, the, the um, you know synopses, or do people pitch them in? Because I know there was yeah. a few other writers in, involved as well. So, is it a real? Is it like the show? Stop, you know, stop writers one, room you know, kind of set up, is it? Yeah, and, you, yeah, and you're well, in charge. It's, it's and, a, that you know. that one in particular was it was a strange one because I really wanted to do a a connecting season because mm. there was a bit of a gap on TV. Uh, but the wonders of COVID slowing mm. everything down. And um, I knew that there wasn't going to be a season for a bit in between things. So I thought it'd be great if, if the players yeah, could yeah. have their own series that they could do. And I wanted to do one mm. that had like a, a, yeah. a Bad Wolf style story arc, but a little bit more, even more connected. And I was mm. chatting to a couple of, uh, of, of the writers and said, this is what I want to do. And one of them said, oh yeah, I can come up with those. Came up with the story ideas for the episodes. They were just like a paragraph. And then it was basically a case of finding some some writers and saying, how Hmm. does this interest you? Can you develop this into a full episode length adventure? And then they submit it all. We we kind of make sure it all fits together. And yeah, yeah. So it was a bit of a, almost like a writer's room effort, that one. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking through the the, the book for it now. It look, we should do this one, Paul. It looks great. It so you're just getting uh, right into know. it now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make make up for for the last thirty years of not playing role role playing games, the yeah. sunny just crammed them all in. <laughs> when my yeah. memory faculties aren't quite as good as what they used to be. <laughs> But there you go. But actually, but this is great. another thing I just want to say as well. Actually, the, the fact is, you could be any age, really, can't you? I mean, you're saying Jeff, that you're, you know, Ethan's eight years old. You know, I'm in my yeah. things. So, you know, anything in between that, really. And I'm, I'm trying to convince Freya, who just popped in to get a print out an exam sheet. You know, I'm trying to convince her to to jump in and do this because I reckon she'd like it as well. Yeah, she, I think she'd mm. enjoy it. I like, you know, you're quite a good uh, example. You know, you. What'd you call you me? Were, hey, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> you were reluctant, you know. 
you're reluctant I was, and to do and it. I, and you, I feel terrible you ended for that up really as well. Enjoying but, it. You know, it's yeah. it's. I don't yeah. know. Just you know, I mean, again, in the eighties, I, I knew uh, not so much friends, but I knew people who <laughs> people who played like Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> as per the Stranger yeah. Things, and and I never. I I mean, I I'm I'm a nerdy geek anyway, but I thought they were a whole another level of nerdy geekism, mm-hmm. you know, that to which I wasn't really sort of included, and I never. And because I I'm more of a sci-fi rather than a fantasy, you know, a lot of the uh, mm-hmm. RPG games were more fantasy based, or at least it mm-hmm. seemed to me, you know, that was my sort of opinion of it, and it, and you know, I'd never really been into Warhammer, and you know, I, and I'm not. The closest I've ever got to Dungeons and Dragons, really, apart from watching it on Stranger Things, is is just is, is actually watching the recent movie that was out, which again I really enjoyed. And I say to myself, well, I don't really like fantasy. I don't do dragons, mate. You know, witches and sorcery and all that bollocks. Blah 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 blah. And yeah, I played Skyrim twice. <laughs> you know, back, you know, it took like almost five years of my life, but. I, but that's the thing, you know. But we're you all like full fantasy. of conflicts and things, and we're all full of like really strange, yeah. you know, walls. It's they're almost like like prejudices in a way, you know. I'm not going to play RPG. It's too complicated, or it's too geeky, or whatever, you know. And it's like, well, just get rid of all that stuff. Just take it away mm. and just just give it a go. And if you love it, you love yeah. it. If you don't, and, you don't. And if you don't, yeah. And you know, you know, it was great fun. I and that's really the most genuinely thing. enjoyed it. Really. The thing I, I, I would say uh, is there's there's a couple couple of really positive mm. things that have always come out of role playing games with me. Uh, number one is I started playing mm. when I was about thirteen, fourteen, and the gaming group yeah. that um, we that formed back then, I'm still friends with now, and I'm it's in my mid yeah. fifties, mm. and we still game. Um, despite us all split going to other sides of the planet, uh, it's like some of us are in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah you can still do it. We're still playing yeah. D&D now. And um, if anything happens to one of us, we're, we're all there. We're, we're like really, really good, close friends still, yeah. after, even after all this mm. time. And the, the other thing was I got my first um, job because of D&D. It wasn't D&D related. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the, first, the mm. first, first job I applied for was working for um, what was then Humberside County Council's Nature Conservation Department and uh, working right. in their department were, were doing maps. Uh, and, oh, okay. and it wasn't really yeah. a map thing because it, it's like, oh, you, we can yeah. see you can do maps could be play D&D. But it was, it would, yeah. I, I talked to the boss after I got the job and he said, oh, it's down to two, down to, the last two people and it was you and somebody else and we gave you the job because right. you play D&D because we know you can think your way out of problems and yeah, yeah. sort out and, that's yeah. interesting isn't and it and so yeah. if, if ever really you think good. D&D's not good for you <laughs> Put it, yeah. put it on your CV. Yeah. You never know, do you? That's a great, yeah. Ca- yeah, case study, I love that. But, yeah. That's a brilliant story. So, what's um, what's the longest Ooh. game that you've taken part in? You know, have you got a, you know, a, a board set somewhere that you know, has been going you know, on since nineteen seventy seven? Well, the, the, that can be take. The question can be taken two ways. Um, one can be the Uh-oh. longest game session. We actually tried to break the record for it. And, um, yeah. We. we when we were in our late teens, we decided we were going to do a charity marathon RPG, and we mm. tried to do ninety hours nonstop um, oh, in uh, in a wow. church hall somewhere, trying to raise money for the church roof, um, which was ironic considering it was just when they were saying D and D was evil. Um, but mm. yeah, that, that, I wouldn't recommend that. It's not healthy, and you do, and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I bet that started yeah. getting weirder like, as, as the hours went on. Not something you can do in your fifties either. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the pieces are moving. Played, um, they, they've lasted yeah. a while. Um, I think the longest one we did recently was uh, we did a great game of Tales from the Loop, which is a fantastic mm. game as well, um, and. Ah, is, that, is that on the, the Amazon Prime series yeah. with, where they're based on yeah. that guy's yeah, paintings? The, 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 the game's based yeah, on those paintings they are. as well. So, yeah, um, we, we, mm. we did a game of that which last, I think lasted about three years. Um, uh, the, the, oh, the, wow. The characters wow. themselves got so, uh, grew up because you start as teenagers, yeah. it's like preteens. And then there's another game that they, they produce called Things from the Flood, which covers the rules for when you're teenagers. And we evolved into that game. Yeah. And then. 
we didn't stop the apocalypse. So we started, that evolved into another game system. Then we time traveled back to try mm. and stop it all from happening. It was, yeah, that was, it was, it was epic. <laughs> See, that's how they, they can evolve, mm. can't they? And, you know, how, how you can be really And suppose you, you don't plan that whole story no. out, do you? You kind of, do, as right. it goes, it develops yeah, just, yeah, and it evolves. evolves but... Yeah. So, if um, what tips and advice would you give to someone who was, you know, looking to get into RPG games Blimey. for the first um, time? <laughs> I just said, oh, oh, "Role playing games, games." Role playing games, games. <laughs> if you um, get a chance to go to a convention, that's always a great one because there's always places where you can drop in and have a go and mm. see see what you think. Um, if you can't get to a convention and want to see what one looks like being played um then youtube's your best bet um critical yeah. role is the obvious choice because for for things like D um but they're yes they, yeah. they've been at a lot yeah. of conventions like MCM uh, and, and stuff uh, over here. a guy yeah. called um eric campbell who used to work for geek and sundry that where critical roles formed as well he did a, a yeah. very long game um, which didn't really have a title. It was kind mm. of called um, Eric's TBD game because he didn't decide what it was going to be. But he, he thought, <laughs> we'll, 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 do a, we'll do a weekly campaign. We'll start with Doctor Who. And it went on for years. Yeah. And it was, it was, that, that was great as well. Yeah, well. Well worth a watch. Um, and also you could try listening to, there's a podcast called Game of Rassilon as well, which I think they're on, on their fifth oh, okay. and final season at the moment, um, which is just an audio wow. one. Um, oh, okay. Like where they yeah, yeah, yeah. playing yeah. through, um, and yeah, that's that's fantastic, and it gives you an idea of the the scope of the stories that you can do, and, yeah, and it just kind yeah, of dips yeah. into the rules a little bit, so, so it's not too too heavy. Yeah. Um, if you mm. really just want to have a go, the starter set that we bought out last year is probably the best bet because it's got the the basics of the rules and it's not quite trimmed down um and yeah. it's also got uh, a, like three or four great introductory adventures which forms a group mm. um, the characters are all pre-generated for you nobody plays the doctor so there's no fighting over it you're all trying to rescue the doctor uh yeah. and you're right. kind of scooped okay, up good. by the targets <laughs> and sort of taken to places mm. that can that can try and help uh and by the end of like the fourth adventure in there, you've got your own time travel device and can go off and do your own thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's yeah. Uh, and yeah, of course yeah. it comes with the dice and anything like that. Yeah. And by that point, you're oh, really yeah. versed in it, aren't you? And steeped in yeah. in the whole thing, and presumably want more and want to create exactly. your own thing yeah, now. And, yeah. yeah. So, do you have um, any idea of how many people play around the world? I imagine you know. With a video game, you know, X number of copies were sold, but it, it must be slightly different. Trying to gauge. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you sell a, a book, but, no, you know, 10 no people could be playing. At all. It's strange. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's it's doing yeah. well, to, you know, it's still going, isn't it? And, you know, particularly with this, the 13th Doctor stuff here, you know, there's multiple books yeah. coming out and, you um, know, expansions and stuff. So I. I assume yeah, it's yeah. good I mean, it's to keep going. This is the 13th year we've been doing it. Um, and yeah. there's, yeah. all, uh, I'd say, about 20 plus books available mm. still um, for the yeah. first edition. Um, this is the, the, the second edition, the one with Jody on the front, um, is uh, a, even more simplified, which is probably perfect for, for new gamers. Um, but it's yeah. still got the complexity yeah. for anybody who wants to make it a bit more gritty. Mm. But yeah, yeah. yeah, I obviously have no idea. Um, although, um, <laughs> when it comes to, I, I, I'm going off on a, tr on a, on a different tangent now. Um, Let's go for it. Think, thinking of rule, it. rule systems. Um, yeah. If you if you want a bit more crunch and a bit more um, d in detail to your rules, and mm. then um, we brought out Doctors and Daleks, which is a separate um, line. Um, uh, yes, yeah, we'll be the Alien that, yeah. just came out recently, which is like the monster manual um, for it. Um, Doctors and Daleks uses the fifth edition rule system, which is completely different to the normal Doctor Who RPG. Uh, right. So it is okay. compatible with other 5e games 
Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and um, you can cross over with your other 5e games. The, it, it, is, it is more complicated. Um, and yeah, but yeah. it does introduce <clears throat> some new bits to players who are familiar with, with Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. which is mostly mm-hmm. the non combat combat. Because DD yeah, is basically right. you go into a room and hit it with a sword. Um, and <laughs> yeah, <It's your> <laughs> so so um, yeah. so Dots and Daleks was a bit of a, a bit of a, a challenge to try and get the um, like you were saying the, the earlier with the, thing. The, yeah. the, the system. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, there's a there's a really cool game system that we've developed in there, which allows you to mm. actually deplete the enemy's hit points. Well, they're kind of like a metaphorical yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that by um, outsmarting them, um, confusing them with mm. with logical gobbledygook, or yeah, or yeah. just just telling them <laughs> that their plan's wrong, <laughs> or, or destroying a gadget in a room, or something like that. So, so yeah, and and that's that's been um, very highly regarded when that came out, which is which is great because that's fantastic, isn't it? That's yeah. Brilliant. yeah, yeah. So, what are you working on for the for the range now? Um, you know, you can uh, you know blank out words and stuff. You know. um, <laughs> but is is uh, you know is there more with with the thirteenth Doctor? You know, it's all going to be fourteenth and fifteenth now, isn't it? I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah and any future stuff for, for the, the regenerations now, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, the next thing we've got coming out is our sixtieth anniversary. Um, um, mm. things which will be um, a pair of books which covers um, the last 60 years basically um, oh wow so they're, yeah. they're kind of almost like a slimmed down version of the Doctor Source books because there's, there's um, 13 of those so so far mm-hmm. um, so yeah. they've managed to get a book which covers the classic era and a book which covers the modern um, and all the doctors and as, as many companions as we can stat up and squeeze mm. in there and there's also um, <laughs> an adventure that goes through every doctor incarnation that join, oh, okay. joins up yeah. uh, oh, wow. including war doctor and the fugitive doctor and it all kind of ties oh, together wow. into, into one big adventure which you can turn into a, a oh. multi-doctor multi-part Ooh. one that's kind of got me excited <laughs> now. Literally, I'm, yeah, I'm such yeah, a noob, I, I, and yet I'm yeah, really excited yeah. by this. I, I want to do. Yeah. I want to do that. And just looking through the uh, Stitch in Time one, there, we we need to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, yeah, Dave. It's, honestly, it's you, you you know you've opened my eyes <laughs> completely. You know, it's mm. been great playing your game, and you know, talking to you and hearing about you know just just unpeeling the wrapper and just looking at the mechanics of, of how these things are made and the love and the passion and creativity and the and the sheer scale of work that goes into it i, I think you yeah. know is is really extraordinary and i think you know any any fan worth their salt would applaud you and the team wholeheartedly so i shall i shall do that <laughs> yeah honestly it's, it's it's brilliant and uh you know yeah we we had a great time with it and and i think we definitely want to do more and we'll put out our uh, oh, yeah. podcast oh, of us playing it they yeah, go out off to you also yeah, <laughs> yeah, have a yeah. Listen and, um, that's I some mean, weird stuff in there i'll tell you now <laughs> personally I, i'm waiting for russell t davis to call me up and say i like your yeah. idea <laughs> i want to turn it into a script and i'll say oh, sure dear. um but yeah now i need to think of, of part two and uh, and get going and yeah and hopefully our listeners will enjoy it as well and it might maybe Excellent. inspire a few of them to, to get out and get going on it as well so Dave, thank you very much for joining us. This has been a pleasure, and uh, we're looking forward to some more Doctor Who oh, yeah, RPG yeah. action yeah. Great. soon. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks for everyone. joining us, Dave. Thank you, listeners. We shall see you next time. Bye see for now. Soon.